Now we're getting down to some really uh, more rare cases in your research. I think things like this, you can use them. Uh, I don't use them very much unless the research is related to that topic. So, for example, if you're relating some kind of online satisfaction, dissatisfaction, or your research is related to consumer attitudes in their shopping preferences, you may be looking at online communities. And if you're looking at online communities, you want to maybe cite or quote something somebody said. So, for example, you could be on Amazon and you look at somebody's review of something. Or you could be online on Facebook and look at somebody talking about a product and you want to use that information. How do you do that? Well, the way to do that is you have the person's name. Again, last name, first name, middle name the year that they posted it, the month and the day, because more information is more clear, what's the title of the post, then you need to tell something about the post, like a post on Facebook or a review on Amazon, and then you need to tell the URL address, where did you get it from. Let's take a look at an example here. So we begin with, this is the person who posted the information. Last name is Rampers, Rampersad, first name is T, 2005, comma, June 8th was the day of the posting. And the title of the posting was RE, Traditional Knowledge and Traditional Cultural Expression. So again, we begin with a capital and then the rest are all lowercase, just like the title of an article. Where did we get it from? Online forum comment and retrieve from, and here's the URL, right, URL. So that looks kind of familiar to the way we've been doing it so far, only now we're going to say it's from an online community. Here's another example, Smith S, 2006, January 5. So we have the year, comma, month, day. RE, Disputed Estimates of IQ, Electronic Mailing List Message. So where did we get it from? An electronic mailing list message. It was retrieved from this location here. Oh, let me go back here. Another example. PZ Mears. 2007, January, the unfortunate prerequisite and consequences of partitioning your mind, web blog post, retrieved from this location here. Now, in this case, we don't have a first name and a last name because this person doesn't really have a clear first name and last name. In fact, online, people will often use pseudonyms or handles and they become very strange. They're not regular names at all. That's Fine, you can still use that, but of course, you're not going to be able to say what's the first name, what's the last name. That's okay, you just don't put a name with a comma and then another name because that means surname and then first name or family name and first name. So you just go ahead and put whatever name they've used without the comma. Okay, we have another example here. Here's a perfect example Middle Kid. Is Middle Kid a name? Middle kid is a handle. This is what people use as their kind of nickname online. Well, we don't know if that's first name or last name. It doesn't matter, so we don't use a comma in there. Then you go ahead and you have the year, the month, and the day of the post, and then the title, RE, the unfortunate prerequisite and consequences of partitioning your mind, same idea. And then down here you have the actual address. How about a video on YouTube? Well, very similar. We have the name if we have it. Now again, it's very possible that the person doesn't have a regular name. They're using a handle, a nickname, or something else. That's okay. But if they do have a name, and you can see that it's a family name and a first name, then you reverse them and use a comma. If not, you don't. In this case, we do have a name. Norton is a family name, the surname. R is the given name, 2006 is the year, November 4th, that's the year it was, that's the year, the month, and the day it was posted online, not the day you saw it, but the day it was posted. How to train a cat to operate a light switch, and this is a video file, 
retrieve from there. This is the URL. Okay, so important to remember that day, that is not the day you access it, but the day it's posted because later other people are going to be looking for that and they want to be able to find which one it is you looked at. Okay, wow, that is like a lot of stuff, isn't it? It's very overwhelming at times to keep all of this in mind. It's important to remember though that you don't need to remember all of it. What you do is step by step every reference that comes in, you just check. Is this an easy reference or a little bit special? Most of your references will be very normal. It's going to be an article from a journal. It's going to have the author and it's going to have a, an article title. It's going to have a journal name and a date, an issue number. It's all going to be very straightforward. As long as that information coming in, you double check it. You make sure, hey, is this right? It goes into your database that you're using, then everything will be okay. Every time you see something special though, pay attention. And then what do you do? Get your APA manual out. Hopefully you get the ebook. And then you can just check the ebook quickly and you can say, well, this is exactly how this rule works. It's a great way to get it straight. But you don't want to think, I gotta keep it all inside of my brain. That's a little bit difficult. Alright, good luck writing your reference list for your APA.